this is Hassan Beek. I am a PhD student at Technical University of Denmark. In this video, I will demonstrate how the genetic circuits generated from shallow CAD can be simulated in Divisim. First of all, we know that shallow outputs the SVOL file which contains the structural information of a circuit only. This SVOL file has to be converted into SPML file which describes the behavior of a genetic AND gate. This can be done using iBiosim. But when the SPOL file is converted into SPML, iBiosim default parameters are used to define the kinetic loss. So once we have the SPML file, we can load it into DBSIM. If the user wants to perform the simulation without loading the shallow UCF, they can just use it to simulate it with the default iBiosim parameters, which they can use it in the iBiosim itself. However, when the user wants to perform simulation using shallow UCF parameters, they can just check here and what I, what Divisim does is actually parse the shallow UCF parameter file and extracts all the information about the circuit components parameters and it also extracts the default kinetic loss and remove the RNAP related parameters. This is done in order to simplify the relation that exists between the shallow UCF parameters and the default IBSM parameters. We have derived a relation between some of the parameters like for example the degradation rate of uh, any species is related to the response parameters of the shallow UCF file with this relation. It should be noted that the SPOL file generated from shallow does not contain any information about the input proteins or input end users which are actually used to control the circuit's behavior. Let's begin with the with loading the SPML model of a genetic AND gate that is constructed using I, uh, using shallow. When we construct the AND gate using shallow, it contains it generated the circuit with the for, with the list of components shown here. However, the genetic AND gate shown in the shallow science manuscript contains PM3R1 as one of the circuit components but since shallow optimizes circuit and selects the components from the pool of available components in this case it selects EMTR instead of PM3R1 so you can analyze the circuit components here this parameter tab contains the default IBSM parameters this reaction tab we can see the kinetic laws used to define the behavior of a genetic um, circuit and the ordinary differential equations are generated by division. So when you select UCF, it simplifies the kinetic loss and substitute the UCF parameters in the equations. Now we can perform the stochastic simulation by creating a virtual environment for stochastic simulations. Minimize this and yes. So with the help of these control knobs, we can change the concentration of uh, these circuit components during runtime. But at the moment, we just want to have PTET and PTAC as a input to the circuit. We can begin the simulation again. And now we can see that this is how the circuit is behaving. Uh, when the model is executed. So you can see that um, initially the circuit's output was high a bit but it gradually lowers down and this is the concentration of the PHLF protein. Let's open up the circuit side by side. Yep. So we have the promoter PTAC but in this case uh, it will be controlling the in transcription of um, AMTR instead of BM3R1. So let's trigger it and see. It starts to produce the concentration of the AMTR protein. So we have to apply all of the possible input combinations. 
in this case we have applied 0 1 we don't know what would be the threshold value this is one of the feature of uh, Divisim that it allows the uh, user to perform the automatic threshold value analysis when this switch is turning to automatic mode um, Divisim analyze what is the minimum input concentration required to trigger the circuit's output all right so we have applied already an input combination 0 1 let's apply a combination on zero you can see that uh, when the input when we have applied PTET it triggers the transcription of SRPR so SRPR starts producing which triggers the uh, which suppresses the production of PHLF and in this case you can see that the PHLF is uh, reduced and here you can also see that when uh, when only p tat is high and the other input is low we can see the slight noises of a, um, yfp protein as well so it says that the yfp protein can also be produced because at this instant when the srpr was triggered the concentration of the amtr was also high so both of them collectively suppress the production of phlf which in turn starts the production of yfp here so it's a matter of timing how much time does it take to actually completely die out the concentration of uh, PHLF so you, you see that the YFP was a bit high for us this interval of time but then it reduced down to zero then we can trigger input combination 1 1 We can also speed up the simulation one since we are triggering the, this uh, unlike wet lab experimentation we can trigger the promoter counts here but we know that, uh, that the promoter count cannot be changed from the model is prepared only the inducer or protein input con concentration can be changed and increased to find out what is the required concentration to figure the output it's taking a bit longer you can see that the phlf protein is completely dying out here and it triggers the production of ifv but we don't know whether it's a, it's just a it's just a glitch or it will remain high for the rest of the time until we'll so it actually say uh, shows that the, the it's key point in freezing and we can so see you cannot see the concentration of the inputs most likely here but what we can do is we can open up the mixed signal static graphs where you can see when both of the inputs are triggered one it starts to produce yfp after this amount of delay but you can also see that there is a period of time where the output was a, a little high i mean it's a logic one so even you have to define logic three here yeah yeah there were some glitches here but uh, in order to now the behavior we have to let the simulation run for a bit longer amount of time yep. I guess um, we can also perform the logic verification here and to verify what kind of boolean logic exists between these two inputs and the output we can select from this drop down list and define the threshold value and yeah so it says that it's in genetic AND gate and the this boolean expression actually fits 99.87 percent of the entire simulation data and the rest of the percentage is actually this uh, this noise uh, uh, at this amount of time at this interval of time 
when the output protein was uh, YFP protein was high uh, at the input combination. Uh, you can see it here. Yeah. Three. Set. Yeah. At zero one, it was a bit high, but actually it says that for one one, and actually the behavior of the the circuit model. We can also change the input concentration at any time. And it's not necessary that we should imply, apply all the input combinations in a sequence like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. All we need to do is to apply all the possible combination. It could be in any sequence. So this is how we can perform the timing analysis and logic verification using DVSIM. And we, we believe that this timing analysis is very important. It's, uh, it's going to be very important just like in electronic circuits. Because in, in here you can see that uh, until this point uh, when the inputs were triggered 1 1 in both of the cases here until this point it was not behaving like a generic AND gate. So we didn't know that whether it's really an AND gate or not. If it has to be cascaded with some other component circuit components we should make sure that it should bear this propagation delay in the design all right so thanks for watching i hope you all enjoyed this video demo